What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Chance Bishop Show for a brand new episode of our MLB The Show 22 Road to the Show featuring none other than Chance Bishop right here. Episode 101 on the series here on YouTube. Yeah, 101 episodes and 20 episodes remaining of our Road to the Show series. So it's going to be a fun ride here for Chance Bishop as we go off into the sunset these final couple of seasons. Uh, but Chance right here in the ALDS taking on the Kansas City Royals. So a small market team versus the big market Boston Red Sox. A team that spent a lot of money to bring in Chance Bishop. They brought in Julio Rodriguez. They brought in a lot of premier talent here in Boston. Something that the Royals you know, can't really afford. Not something that they're known to do. They don't go out there. They don't spend a lot of money. It's just not part of their forte to do stuff like that. But let's be honest right now. No one really cares at the end of the day who has the bigger payroll or who has the best players. At the end of the day, it just comes down to who can win three games first. So taking on this Kansas City Royals team, I think the biggest fear for most Red Sox fans is can the pitching staff hold up? Henry Quintana's on the mound to start game one. 33 starts, 14-9, and nine, a 4.73 ERA so far in the regular season. So he will be the game one starter for the Boston Red Sox, as we hope to start off with a one nothing lead here in the series. Bishop had 387 on the season with 1,100 OPS, 42 home runs, and 130 RBIs. So a fairly good series a season for Chance Bishop as the first at-bat here against KC. He strikes out swinging. So now bottom of the second, Boston's up 2 nothing. He's going to ground into a fielder's choice right there, as that's going to end the second inning. Hate to see that one right there. Now bottom of the fourth, that's going to be a walk right there for Chance. So he's on first base. Bases are juiced now. 4-2 KC lead, bottom of the seventh inning. That's the chopper. Third baseman throws the first. Not in time. That's an infield single. Let's go, Chance Bishop. He beats it out for the hit. 4-2, bottom nine. Chance Bishop puts that one on the ground. That one's going to go to the second baseman. And that's a ground out to end game one. Boston dropping game one. A final score of 4-2. Bishop making the last out of the game. Not, not something that you want from your star player. That's just an upsetting thing to do just to be the last out. Understand you can't win them all, but you just never want to be the last guy that makes that out. Be, be anyone else. Be the guy in the batter's box. Be the guy before him. Just don't be the guy. Sal Fellows. 33 starts, 12 and 10, 5 38 year rate, 100 innings pitched, 161 punch outs, 90 walks in those 200 innings pitched. So, fellows, in that two hole here for this best of five series. And that first at bat, Bishop, he's going to pop up. I'm sorry, he's going to strike out. And then there you go, throw out, completes it. And that's going to be the first out. It's 4 nothing here, bottom of the third inning. Fellows is not doing too hot, it seems like. He's already had four early runs. And Bishop's first at bat will end up in a, nope, single thrown out, trying to advance the second. You hate that right there. You hate you just can't get a hustle double in off that left field wall if it goes right to the left fielder, it seems like. Now top of the fourth. We're going to be in the field right now. Bishop's going to field it. He's going to go to first base with it for the first out here in the fourth. So one down now here in this fourth inning uh, for the Kansas City Royals. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, Bishop's up to the bat. He's going to get himself a base knock to center field. He's going to be a lead off single. So single leads off the fifth inning for Boston. As now bottom of the sixth is an 8-3 KC lead. Bishop goes right field. That one will get down. That's off the base of that right field wall for a double. One out double for Chance Bishop. He's in scoring position. You like to see that one right there. Still a three bottom of the eighth. Bishop, he connects with that one, sends that one to center. That one will... Be caught on the diving, not caught, that one be knocked down on the diving play. Bishop will be thrown out going to second, though, as he thinks that that ball got just a little further away from that center fielder. Not the at-bat he wanted. A throw out there. Doesn't end the game, but being down by five doesn't help it either. 
So we dropped game two, a final score of eight to three, the Royals leading the uh, Boston Red Sox two games to none here on the road here at Kauffman Stadium, a stadium I've been to in real life. It's a cool stadium. It's a fun stadium. You know, it's a real nice stadium. It's just a shame that it seems like the product that gets put out on the field at Kauffman just always isn't the best product that gets represented. Now, putting a 17-9 pitcher with a sub-3 ERA on the mound for Game 3 of the postseason. That's pretty good product right there, I would say so myself. First at bat for Bishop. That one's going to get down, and that one's going to end up being a double here to lead off this first inning. So leadoff double gets the offense started early uh, for the Boston Red Sox. Now here, bottom of the first two outs in the inning. Bishop going to field this one. He's going to go to first base in time to 1-2-3 the Royals. So the Royals get set down in order. Now here, top of the third. There's two outs in the inning. Bishop, that one's going to be hit right to the center fielder. And that one's going to be caught for the out right there to end the third inning. Real unfortunate right now. Still tied in the sixth. Bishop's up and Bishop pops this one way up there. The left fielder comes all the way in. And he will make the catch for the uh, first out here in the inning. So one down now here in the sixth. It's a 2-1 game now in the seventh. Runner on first base. And Bishop pops that one way high. But way foul. Foul territory behind the catcher's plate. That's a real shame. But it's a 2-1 Boston lead. 2-2 now here in top of the ninth inning. Bishop pops this one all the way up. The left fielder will make the catch for the L. And there you have two outs now in the ninth inning. As Boston looks to As Boston look to hold on, but they cannot hold on. And the Kansas City Royals not only defeat the Boston Red Sox, they end up sweeping uh, the Boston Red Sox. No thanks to Chance Bishop's offense. He was as good as always in the offense. For sure, he wasn't hitting home runs left, right, and center like he had in some playoff pushes. Uh, but still a very good postseason run for Chance Bishop. It just turns out that this was his final year right there. Uh, the Marlins had defeated the Royals in the 2038 World Series, which, which is a shame. That's super unfortunate right there. Bishop wins your MVP after not winning it last season. Bishop wins the batting title. So Bishop's, Bishop's winning a bunch of awards. That's just kind of his forte. He comes out there. He just hits really well. So he's going to probably be you know, first place in the average. He's always you know top performing. And he's always going to end up being, you know, he's going to get those awards in the American and the National, no matter what league he's in. The MVP votes. He's always going to get the, the Hank Aaron Award votes, the Silver Slugger votes. He's always going to get those ones. And it is it is what it is. You know, most valuable player. You hate to see it when it's not your guy. But, hey, you can't win them all. That's just part of life. It's part of, you know, this game moving forward. Now, there you go. Former team, the Marlins, are World Series winners, which you hate to see. You leave a little early, and then maybe they get there. A little quicker. Who knows? At this point, it comes down to how sustainable is that team when it's all said and done. But going through the retirees, who retired anyone of value? Uh, I mean, right now, I don't really, I don't really know if anyone of value is calling it a career. I mean, Austin Martin is like he called it a career, which confusing. I'm not going through this list, this list, anything else that's jumping out at people. I hey, forget Tatish Jr., Juan then. You know, there, there's a couple of prospects who are starting to retire. Tatis played 20 years in the league, 408 home runs, 170, uh, 1,700 RBIs, a 302 career 